the Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. Cynthia Germanata <laughs> and her daughter, Lady Gaga, yeah. decided to form uh, the Born This Way Foundation. And we thought it was just a great idea for a thousand different reasons. And even today, new stories are coming out of this organization. And you know what? Now more than ever, we're saying we need the Born This Way Foundation. Also, with someone to turn to, a new initiative they have going on, we mm-hmm. got to talk about it with Cynthia Germanana. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, you have bags. Where are you going? Are you traveling? Are you, are you arriving, or, <laughs> I, uh, arriving or leaving? Leaving. Well, leaving fine. from here to go to D.C. Excellent. Nice. So you've got work to do? Got work to do. Speaking at a summit. Yeah? Yeah. So, look, since the beginning of the, the Born This Way Foundation... What was the original goal, and are you seeing progress going toward those goals? Yeah, so the original goal of Born This Way Foundation was, it was 100% my daughter's idea. She experienced a lot of issues growing up where she was uh, mistreated and isolated and, you know, many things that young people experience. And she wanted a foundation to, I mean, to basically allow young people to have better support than she had growing up. Right. So that was really the premise of the foundation. And her goal from the inception was to create a world that's kinder and braver and inspire young people to be better equipped than she was to deal with her own struggles. It's really interesting. Our second conversation today with a guest about items and important topics that were swept under the rug at (laughs) one point. Totally. And we all decided if we don't make some noise... Nothing's going to get done. And right. so you and your daughter decided, we got to do something with this. Right. And so since then, since 2012, where are we now? And I mean, what, what exciting news do you have to share with us about, about moving forward? Well, we have come so far, and it'll be seven years in February right. that, that we've been out. We've come so far in terms of, uh, you know, elevating the conversation around mental health, providing resources and tools to young people in their communities to be better equipped to deal with their struggles and, and building communities that are kinder and braver for young people. So the, the stigma is coming down around mental health, health and many other issues. So Thank it's you. a very, very exciting time. Uh, and we recently launched uh, a program that will, it'll help normalize the conversation around mental health, start healthy conversations, and it's called hashtag someone to turn to. And Stephanie really has this idea that everybody should know who their mental health team is. I mean, if we're sick physically, mm-hmm. you know who to turn to. You know, you know who your physician is. Uh, you know, you know who your other doctors are in time of need. And mental health should be as easy and as commonplace um, for that. So, someone to turn to is to identify someone in your life uh, that is your rock, that is your research source that you can open up to for. To talk about your mental health issues. Well, I have no one in this room to. <laughs> <laughs> I look around, stop it. I'm going to look outside this room to find my rock. Well, you, know, you know how many times you would be maybe afraid to bring it up to somebody, and then you finally do, and you say, Yeah, you know, I'm going through some stuff, and they go, Oh my gosh, so am I. And yeah. you're amazed at how many people yeah. around you are going through the same thing. I think it helps open up that conversation when you tell your own story. Yeah. And that that's the power of this, is identifying that person. And then sharing it with us on social media. Yeah. So we're, we're very, very excited about this. And, you know, I know, and we're modeling it ourselves at the foundation. My someone to turn to is my sister. You know, she's always there for me. I might get a text from her on any given day that's just, you know, how's your day going? Uh, is there anything that I can do for you? And, you know, with young people in particular, it really helps to know who that person is. Uh, we found through our research that young people more often will talk to a peer even more than their parents. Right. Oh, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so think about it. Who is your go-to person? If right now you're asking yourself that question and you cannot immediately form a name, then this is something you need to work on. And keep in mind, the person you may talk to and say, hey, I need for you to be my go-to person, they may be looking for one, too. So there's an interesting bond there. Let me ask you this, though. As a mother, uh, Cynthia, your daughter, Stephanie, of course we call her, the Gaga. <laughs> the Gaga? We love her. We, Gaga. As a mother, and, and Danielle, as a mother, mm-hmm. when you when you have kids who are going through what Stephanie went through and what your, your kids could potentially go through, yeah. I mean, that puts you at a space where you, you may sometimes feel a little helpless. Like, the world's much bigger than anything I yeah. can do for my, well, my, my kids sometimes. My little one, who's nine, he gets anxieties a lot. And I see a lot of the things that I have felt over the years in him. And I think, gosh, you know, when I was his age, I wish somebody had known to maybe have me talk to somebody. So I actually did that. I was like, you know what? 
you're going to talk to somebody now and you're going to we're going to try to put this you know maybe help you out now so that when you get older it doesn't get worse and progress and um you know because when we were little you didn't have that no No. it was like you said swept under the rug and nowadays they're saying his therapist actually said more kids nowadays have anxiety because of the way the world is and the sooner you see it and the sooner you get help and you talk about it the, the more chances you are to to just be able to deal with it better. Yeah, but you're a great mom to do that. I mean, we don't always, as parents, talk to young people about our own stresses. Yeah. Which I think is an issue. Which you I know, never we, thought my parents had stresses. Well, because, right. right. We, we want to appear so strong. Yeah. And, yeah. It's true. I mean, but, but it's I, more damaging, I think, to them because they think that they should be as strong as we are. Right. And, you know, it's it's kind of these intergenerational differences also. My right. mother didn't, re- you know, it was kind of like, well, suck it up right. and, you know, snap out of it. Mm-hmm. And that's not the way that it works. Pull yourself there's, together. Pull yourself well, together. But, that's but, <laughs> but there's so many out, stresses yeah. on young people yeah. today. Right. And that, it's so much easier to, to shake someone to say, Pull yourself yeah. together. Pull yourself, yeah. Right. Well, and also it works two ways because, you know, I'm I'm at an age when some people younger than me actually are at an age where their mom and dad, their parents are going through a, a, a part of their lives where they are f- seeing anxiety yep. creep up yeah. and take advantage of, not take advantage, but, but or do it. So rare take over. Head. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, always being on the lookout for everyone in your life to say, hey, wait a minute, let me sit here and observe what they're saying and what they're what they're doing, I may see that they may need just a friend uh-huh. right now. It's so important to kind of get out of your space and get into someone else's space just to be there just in case. So much so. You know, and I don't know about you, but I, I didn't always get it right, certainly, as a parent. Yeah. And one thing I, I really missed was, like, what's the difference between just normal childhood or teenage behavior and a real issue, right. a real mm-hmm. psychological problem? And I didn't really understand all the warning signs, signs and that's something we yeah. try to convey uh, in our work now yeah. is providing resource tools, and we do that through uh, someone to turn to, resource kits as to what are those differences, how do you get started, having that healthy conversation. And a lot of times, don't like I know parents will say, oh, it's normal. You're getting bullied in school or you're getting right. picked on. That's normal. Yeah, scary but parents told him to snap out yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or, they said, suck it up. Or you'll, <laughs> yeah, or you'll grow easy. out of it. Sometimes that doesn't happen, and sometimes you need to address it and you need to take care of it because it affects... Different kids, different ways, and different people, different ways. Well, and not only that, in Stephanie's case, it never really stopped. It yeah. followed her from, you know, middle school to high school yeah. to college and left a very lasting impression. I mean, she developed anxiety, depression. Right. Um, I'm, so I'm assuming still experiencing at a young age. some of these things today. I mean, as we all are, it's in, in it some It hasn't fashion. gone away. Yeah. I mean, I think there are, you know, trauma responses that get created from something yeah. like that for oh, a wow. young person who doesn't really know any better and just wants to be liked yeah you know what cynthia i gotta tell you by the way cynthia germanata is here she's the president and co-founder of the born this way foundation by the way when born this way came out i started dancing and crying yeah like an old gay guy <laughs> here we go i wish it was that when i was a kid i need i needed lady gaga to give me that song when i was a kid i tell this story on the air a lot I, I'll, I'll bring it up again when my dad was close to 90 years old and he was about to pass away he told me he said there's never a point in your life where you're no longer scared there's never a point in your life, no matter at how old you are. And he said, I'm 90 years old, and I still get worried about things. I still get anxious about things. So some people you may consider your rock, you know, they, they have these feelings as well. Yeah. So it's just great to acknowledge that we all are capable of doing great things at the same time, be a little anxious, yeah. you know. And, but he was so brave to say that. Well, that's what that's- I thought. Absolutely. He, had, he was like, I have nothing to lose, so let me just lay it out for you. I said, why didn't you tell me that when you were younger, like 85? <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of times, too, you know, people are very focused on this person looks sad or this person looks anxious. But you need to check on your strong friends, too, because they're the ones who are least likely to right. say something. And I mean, for me personally, it took me until about two years ago to just be able to say to someone, I'm sad. I would never say it and never do it. Finally saying it has been so freeing and feels so good. And I wish I would have done that a long time ago. So I think it's important to check on them too. Yeah. Absolutely. Good for you. Well, thanks. So I, I, how can we get, first of all, it, it, more involved with, 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 with being more active in our family and friends' lives it, on, on a very simple level, a very, you know, I don't want to scare them off, but I want to let them know I'm here for them. And all the way to like, what are the big things that we can do to make differences these days from your point of view? Well, I, I mean, I think the simple things are starting that conversation. Because Give it, me an example of how to do that, in your opinion. Well, listening and understanding. So, 
I would say to you, Elvis, how are you feeling today? Oh, you want me to answer? Yeah. I'm feeling a little tired. We were up late for Justin Timberlake's concert. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm feeling really great today. You know what? Life has been sort of rocky for all of us on this show. Recently, we lost a very de dear friend. He, he took his life about a, a little over a week ago, and we've been coping with it. But at the same time, I'm starting to see that we're bonding in a way I never expected because we're getting through this. But how am I doing? Doing great. Think, well, how, well, Cynthia, how are you doing today? But just that conversation, I would not have known that you lost a friend. But see, I felt the need to tell you that. Isn't that weird? But I hope that I created a safe space that allowed you to do that. You did. And, you know, I wouldn't have known that. So I have a better appreciation for what you're going through. Uh, and I know that so many people around the world are going through that. I mean, eight, we lose 800,000 people a year to death by suicide. Wow. One in four people experiences a mental health issue. And it's the second leading cause of death among young people ages 15 to 29. So These numbers are way too big. They're way too big. It's a very, very serious issue. And just that, you know, I'm sitting two feet from you and you have someone in your life that you lost to suicide. So I thank you for sharing that with me. And I'm sorry for your loss. But you know what? And thank you for that. But Cynthia, for people who are the rocks, like you are being our big rock right now. And, and this is something that Gandhi was saying too, you know, our rocks need to be checked on too. So as profound as this may sound, check your friend's rocks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> can I say that? Yeah. You can say that. Yeah. And, uh, Tell me what's next for the Born This Way Foundation, especially as you're launching new initiatives like the hashtag someone to turn to initiative. What's next and what can we do to observe and, and participate and help out? There's a couple things that are next. Uh, one is more broadly working on global mental health and really making it a priority on the global stage. Um, it's the least funded area in terms of global aid. And yet it's, it's so prevalent. So we're spending a lot more time um, on that. And secondly, we will be doing something very exciting with Stephanie's Vegas residency. And we will be setting up in the Vegas community the whole time that she is there and really hoping to make a difference in that community. Wow. With pop-up events, with, um, you know, various uh, events around kindness and bravery and mental health and it's, we're so, so excited about it. Well, we so appreciate, Cynthia, everything you and everyone at uh, Born This Way Foundation is, is working hard and gosh, flying to Washington, D.C. to talk to people that, that need to be yeah. talked to, obviously. Yeah. Uh, we would like to make a contribution of $10,000 to the Born This Way Foundation. Wow. And Thank you so much. That's and, very generous. But even more important than that, I want everyone listening to go online, do the Google for Born This Way Foundation, learn about what they're doing. And and th there's information on their site I saw that can just help you immediately yeah. start to find out answers to questions you may have about anything and everything. And um, please sign up for hashtag someone to turn to. You can do it on our site, bornthisway.foundation, through the end of October. And one lucky winner will get some goodies from Born This Way and a call from me to have a nice conversation. Excellent. That's awesome. yeah. You're going to have a rock give you a call. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, hashtag someone to turn to. There's no TOs. It's all the number two. So it's someone <laughs> to turn to. Yeah. So check it out. Cynthia, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Tell Gaga we said hi. I will. She sends her love. Aww. Love her very much. <laughs> Cynthia Germanata from uh, Born This Way Foundation. Thanks for coming in today. Yeah.